All right, guys, I said I was gonna try and get back in shape to play basketball. Hey there, Mr. Bill Poker Peeps. Welcome to the vlog. Highway robbery. Highway robbery. I was robbed. Literally, figuratively. You'll find out here in a little bit what I mean. So as you guys know, I have not been running very well. I wasn't playing well either. Unfortunately, the run bad continued this week into the run worst, the run the worstest, the worstest is this. Just horrible. I think I was robbed. And I'm just about tired of running bad. So as I told you guys, I was only gonna play once this week. I did, Wednesday Night Poker League. And here are the hands. Is that a full moon, people? I think it is. Uh, it's gotta be a full moon tonight with what's going on. Jeez, please don't tell me I'm gonna start running bad on Wednesday Night Poker League too. It's pretty much the only place that I've been running at least decent. Not tonight, oh my goodness. February 20th, I think I'm the third one out and I'm gonna tell you about the last two hands. So blinds are at 200, 400. I have 11,000 chips, a little over starting stack. Um, and I have ace five of spades under the gun. I decided I would limp and it ends up going five players at 400. The flop comes five, five, deuce, rainbow. I check and unfortunately it checks around. The turn is the 10 of clubs. I lead out for 1500. Dane calls me in the plus one and everybody else folds. The river's the nine of clubs, putting three clubs on board. I bet 1500 again. Dane shoves for 4600. He, I even way out chipped. I don't know how I could fold here. Uh, Dane's a good enough player that he's also betting on even a, a, a worse or five. I make the call. He's got king, queen of clubs. All right, now I'm in middle position one with pocket aces, under the gun limps. The plus one makes it 1200. I decide I'm gonna raise kind of small. I make it 2,600 out of my 4,200. Everybody folds back to the plus one. Carl, who plays pretty tight, he hems and haws and says, I don't think I should do this, but I'll do it anyways. And he makes the call. The flop comes 10 jack queen. And he shoves all in. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, you've got to be kidding me. I said, Carl, you have ace king, don't you? Uh, but I can't fold now. <laughs> So I make the call. He doesn't have ace king. He has pocket tens for a set of tens. And the river comes with a four and a seven. And I am out of Wednesday Night Poker League. Oh, please, please don't tell me I'm gonna start running like this on Wednesday night also. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I've had enough people, I've had enough. There was one piece of good news of getting knocked out is we had an aces crack promotion first one to get aces crack got a 25 dollars gift card to saltgrass steakhouse i'd rather be in the tournament but i did with the 25 dollars gift certificate all right so i'm heading back up there i'm gonna go play in the cash game it's a small game i'm getting my money back from that stupid tournament where i got my aces cracked i'll let you guys know all right so here we go for the game three two one Oh. All right, here we go. Last shot. Three, two, one. Winner, 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 chicken dinner for the game. Who's ready for a nap? Okay, so I went and played in the cash game. I had been there for maybe, I don't know, hour, an hour and a half. Really hadn't been doing very well. I was down like $300. Um, lost two big Omaha hands where I had flopped good and, <laughs> and didn't get a good turn of river. <laughs> so that's the way it goes. But anyway, I was down about $300.
The tournament then ended, and we ended up picking up four players from the tournament, some of the guys left, and three of them are very splashy, and that'd be Matt, Steve, and Stone. The other one that joined the table was Rob. Rob is not splashy, very, very conservative, but also a very good player. Anyhow, when these guys joined the game, then all of a sudden the game changed quite a bit, and it became a much more action game. In fact, the very first hand with these players in the game, I get pocket eights on the gun, I decide to limp because I know somebody's going to raise behind me and then I'll see what I want to do. So I, I limp, there's two callers, Stone obliges, makes it 15, then we get three other callers at 15. So it comes back to me, I bump it up to 115. Comes back to Stone, there's fold, 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 Stone, he shoves all in for my effective stack of 225 and everybody else folds. So the pot is right about $500. So Stone and I decide we will run it three times full boards. And the boards were Jack 4, 7, 7, 9. Mr. Bill wins the first. 3, 8, 6, King, Queen. So my set of eights beats his top pair of kings. And the third board is very, very strange. It went King, Uno card, 4, Joker, Uno card. Holy cow. Mr. Bill wins all three on a flip. Pretty cool for me. Pretty fortunate. Hey, so now I've got about $500. I get ace king. Um, Steve makes it $15. Again, I decide to call instead of raise here. I'm going to see what the other guys want to do. Uh, Stone calls. Matt on the button then makes it $100. Steve calls. I decide I'm going to call here I, instead of shoving. So I call and everybody else folds. The flop with 315 in the pot comes eights of clubs, nine of spades, seven of spades. So we check it over to Matt who bets 150. Steve thinks for quite some time and reluctantly makes the call. I shove behind. Um, Matt calls for his effective stack of 300. Steve grumbles and folds. So with 1,065 in the pot, Matt and I decide we will run it three times. The first board comes king of spades, four of spades. Matt wins that one with a flush. Next board comes three nine. I win that one. The all important third one comes jack 10 and Mr. Bill wins two thirds of a really nice pot. So two hands after those guys come to the table, <laughs> it was already up like $350, pretty nice. We then played what was probably the biggest and most interesting hand of the night. Remember, this is a 1-2 game. Holy cow. I am under the gun plus one with pocket kings. I have $700. Steve is under the gun with $1,200. He makes it $15. I almost always raise with kings, but I decided I would play a little bit different on this one, and I call to see what these other guys will do behind. Uh, Rob behind me in the middle position one makes the call. And then there's two other callers. So we end up going five ways to the flop. $75 in the pot and the flop comes king of hearts, nine of hearts, 10 of hearts. Steve leads out for 30. I decide to call here. I want to keep Rob in the pot. Um, and Rob does go ahead and make the call. The turn is the six of diamonds. Steve leads out for 60. Again, I decide I'm gonna make the call here. Now I'm a little bit concerned because Rob plays very conservatively that he called, that he already may have a made flush. Rob goes ahead and makes the call. The river with 345 in the pot. Bingo, bongo, the nine of spades. I have top boat. Steve checks, I bet $150. Rob then shoves all in for 385. I go ahead and make the call. Yes, he has a straight flush with Jack Queen of Hearts and I lose a big one. Somebody call the cops, I've been robbed. All right, I'm gonna preface this next section with, I don't think I'm a good enough player to do what I'm about to explain, but I am gonna explain to you and it's possible that I should have folded top boat and seen that he had a hand that beat me. 
So first of all, Steve is a player who will absolutely mix it up. He will play questionable hands. He will make moves with uh, cards when he's got top pair only. Uh, but Rob is a lot like that. Rob is, Rob will definitely, he's a really, really good player. Um, he will definitely take a shot at bluffing when he needs to, but he's way, way, way more conservative and plays a much more uh, tight, aggressive type of game. So let's go over this hand a little bit more in detail. And please, <laughs> I raise with Pocket Kings almost every time. Uh, you have to mix it up just a little bit. If this one came back to bite me, I know that I should raise with Pocket Kings most of the time, and I do, okay? So let's just get that out of the way. Let's go based on what was happening on this hand, let's talk about it. So pre-flop with the 75 in the pot, uh, and then the flop comes, King of Hearts, Nine of Hearts, Ten of hearts, I have top set, right? So when Steve bets 30, means absolutely nothing. He's gonna continuation bet. He was the pre-flop aggressor. I smooth call uh, with a top set, which I think is reasonable. Of course, I could have put in a raise here, but I actually want the player behind me to stay in also. And also, you know, either one of those guys could have the made flush already, and if I raise, they could uh, raise behind me. So anyhow, but I really, because I want Rob to stay in, I just make the call. Rob calling on the flop uh, doesn't really mean one thing or another at the moment. I will give him that he might do this with, let's say, jack, queen, pocket nines, pocket tens. He doesn't have pocket king, because I do. <laughs> um, ace king, king queen, king jack. I think he's going to make the call on most of those. Uh, if he has a flush, uh, he could raise here. Um, if he has a set, he might raise here, but I could also see him just making the call. So the bottom line is, on the flop, I know that Rob has a good hand one way or another, but not quite convinced on knowing too much about what it is yet. The turn coming out the six of diamonds. Uh, Steve leads out for 60. Okay, so Steve now is being more defined that he's got something. He's got pocket queens, he's got king queen, ace king. He's got something decent. Uh, he doesn't have a flush. Steve would have bet more on a flush. Uh, Steve doesn't have a straight. Again, I smooth call on the 60 because now after Rob calls on the flop, I'm concerned that he has a flush already. Now, when Rob calls on the turn, um, he's either got an absolute monster or he is on like a nut flush draw. So the question here is, would Rob let a flush or a straight draw get there if he has a set of nines or a set of tens. Or even if he has jack queen um, non-suited. I don't think so. I think he makes a raise here after it's shown bet call, bet call by Steve and I, where we are not really saying we have a flush. I suppose Steve could have flushes in there, but I don't think so. The way Steve plays, he would have bet more. Um, I'm not saying that I have a flush because I would have probably raised. So my gut tells me that if Rob had had a made straight, a made flush, pocket nines or pocket tens, he's probably raising on this board. Okay, so now the river comes the nine of spades and Steve checks. Steve's done, we all know it. Steve has, he has not enough to, he doesn't even have a king here or else he probably bets. Um, so Steve is done. I bet 150, I am telling Rob, I am very, very strong. Uh, I think that I'm telling him I have a full house. Um, because I think that he would think also that on the turn, if I had a made flush, that I would be betting. Now Rob shoves all in. And if he's reading it the way that I think that he would read it, which is Mr. Bill has a full house, then what is he ever shoving on? He's never shoving with the nut flush. Rob plays way too conservative for that. When the board pairs, he would never, never shove with a with the nut flush. Uh, I also think that on the turn, he would have bet it. He never has a full house with sixes because he never would have stayed in on the flop. Pocket tens. Could he have pocket tens? This is the one possibility. If he had played it where he didn't want to raise on the turn, but I think that he would have, would he... Would he 
shove with pocket tens. Possibly. That's the one hand. So that leaves other shoves are pocket nines and jack queen of hearts. I mean, if I look at it, what else could he ever shove with? He can't have pocket kings. I have those. I don't think that he would have gotten here with pocket tens. Never can have pocket sixes. Pocket nines, I really don't think he could have gotten here with pocket nines either. Same reason with the pocket tens. I think that on the turn, he would have bet it. So that leaves me with, unless he's bluffing, and Rob would never bluff on this board, a paired board with a flush draw on board, never, never would he bluffing. He's got to have Jack Queen of Hearts, and that's exactly what he had. Again, I don't think I'm good enough to fold this hand, but I did think about it and think, oh my goodness, does he have it? Uh, I called relatively quickly because, I, again, I'm just simply not good enough to fold top boat here. But if I had thought and taken the time to really think about what he could be doing this with, I think maybe this was, should have been a fold. And I'm not saying that just to be results oriented. Um, I just don't see any bluffs he ever has here. He just doesn't have any bluffs. He's got to have pocket nines, pocket tens, or jack queen of hearts. Um, and again, pocket nines and pocket tens, I seriously doubt if he's going to get that far without raising. So that leaves me with jack queen of hearts. Goodness gracious. All right, guys, tell me, have you ever seen run bad that's worse than that? Not so hot, but it's going to get better. I told you guys this before. Stick with me. I promise we're going to have our best year ever. We're going to win the most money we've ever won. World Series is coming up. I'm going to win a big one this year. I just know it. Hi, guys. It's Buddy and Vicky. Say hi, guys. Hi. Buddy, can you say hi? Okay, well, he's looking around. <laughs> Anyhow, so I want to tell you guys a little bit about the Mr. Bill meetup game, and it's kind of getting exciting. All right, so I've been working with a couple of clubs to have a meetup game, and I've actually got two of them going that I'm negotiating with, so something's going to happen soon. Anyhow, so I was telling Vicky about my meetup game, and I was telling her, hey, there's going to be people come. We're going to get it at a night. I'm going to get a, a club to sponsor the game and all this kind of stuff. And I was so excited about it. <laughs> what did you say? Well, is there anybody famous going to be there? <laughs> that's me. I told that's me. <laughs> and we had a big laugh about it. It was very, very funny. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> buddy, buddy, Dad thinks he's famous. Did you know that? Dad thinks he's famous, buddy. <laughs> Anyhow, you guys all come to the famous Mr. Bill meetup game when I get it scheduled, okay? <laughs> okay, bye. All right, guys, I think that's going to do it for this week. Thank you very much for liking and subscribing and posting comments. I had some really, really awesome, cool comments this past week. Uh, some from some really, really good players giving me some advice, which I am absolutely going to take. But anyhow, I appreciate all you guys. And as I've said before, click on my head right up here in the corner. Subscribe to Mr. Bill. All right, guys, we'll see you all next week. You guys have a blessed week. I'm going to have a blessed week. I will see you guys all next time. Bye.